my name is Lotte Klaasens and I'm a technical advisor working on adolescent programming in emergencies at Plan International. I'm pleased to present Coping with COVID-19, which is a new intervention that we developed to support adolescents and their parents during the pandemic. In all our humanitarian work, we always pay specific attention to adolescents between the ages of 10 and 19 years old, because we know that they are an overlooked group that face specific risks. And very early on during the pandemic, we started to see that risks were rapidly increasing for adolescents as a result of school closures, lockdowns, um, and the social and economic impact of the crisis. We also know that adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable. And when we spoke to girls in numerous countries, they told us that they experienced a range of problems as a result of the pandemic, for example, food insecurity, malnutrition, high levels of distress, and increased levels of violence. Many adolescents also noted that they didn't have any access to reliable information about the virus, placing them and their families at higher risk of infection. So we knew that it was absolutely essential to continue to reach out to the most vulnerable adolescents during the lockdown, and that it was also important to involve their parents in order to strengthen their protective family environment. So we designed a set of support sessions aimed to promote the health, safety and well-being of adolescents during the pandemic. These sessions aimed to provide age-appropriate information for adolescents on COVID-19, provide simple ways for adolescents to develop and practice positive ways of dealing with stress, uh, ways to stay safe, access sexual and reproductive health and rights, and also to continue to learn from home. The sessions were also designed uh, to, to provide space to discuss and address myths and misconceptions related to COVID-19 and address stigma and discrimination. At the same time, the parenting sessions offer tips for parents and caregivers to practice self-care and positive parenting during COVID-19. And we also wanted to make sure parents were aware of the available services that they could access. The package consists of six short sessions for adolescents and six for parents. And there's also an implementation guide for staff or facilitators and m and &E tools. The sessions are uh, 45 minutes long and they're designed for small groups, smaller than we would typically work with, about five to ten participants. These sessions can be used face to face in a group setting or online depending on the context. Currently the package is being used in 20 countries around the world and we have trained our response teams online through webinars and remote support. Because this was a new intervention and a new way of delivering training of staff, we conducted a real-time evaluation in July to review the successes and challenges of this approach. And I would like to share some of the findings of this evaluation. Some of the successes included that the sessions were easy to use for staff and that the participants thought they were really interactive and fun. Both adolescents and their parents felt that the sessions really helped them to connect with each other and build mutual trust. The sessions and particularly the discussions really helped to address some of these myths and misconceptions that existed about COVID-19 in the communities. And in some contexts, it was really great to see that the key messages and activities uh, were used in very innovative ways. For example, um, as audio uh, and, and television message messages or on the radio. Um, some sessions were broadcasted online. Um, and in some countries, the sessions were actually facilitated online through conference calls or WhatsApp. There were also some uh, big challenges. Uh, for example, um, in many contexts, particularly humanitarian settings that we work in, Adolescents and families did not have the means to follow COVID-19 regulations, for example, uh, access to water, soap, or access to face masks. In those situations, um, we uh, really used the sessions as a platform to discuss how those challenges could be addressed. Also, security, lockdown, and the overall unpredictable situation in most settings led to some limited access to, to communities. Uh, delays in implementation, and also irregular attendance of participants. 
Um, although all the topics that we covered were prioritized by our own frontline staff, some of these topics were still very sensitive in the local context or new to staff. For example, um, topics related to sexual and reproductive health or LGBTQI in inclusivity. So um, the rapid and remote training modality that we used was sometimes not sufficient to really build foundational knowledge and skills that were required to deliver the sessions. So we identified a couple of really important ways forward, um, particularly related to continued uh, staff capacity building, both remotely and in-country face-to-face. And we really say that we uh, want to develop new and innovative ways to do this well. One thing that was really highly requested by the field teams was the facilitated learning and exchange between countries. For example, the initial training um, that was delivered in West Africa actually uh, was delivered to teams from Cameroon, Niger and Nigeria jointly. And they really loved exchanging um, uh, about the different topics and really discussing how they tackled common uh, challenges in their contexts. Um, so this was something that was really highly requested to uh, continue. We also think it's really important that we measure the adolescent well-being outcomes and changes in parenting during COVID-19 in more detail. And finally, we think it's really important um, that we also start planning for programming um, in the recovery phase of COVID-19. So, for example, uh, launching uh, more comprehensive life skills and parenting uh, interventions that can follow uh, after the, the shorter coping with COVID package. And with this, I would like to close. Um, if you would like to know more about this package, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, my colleague Anna Belt is here with me uh, in the session to answer any questions. Thank you very much.